What up? Before we get into the podcast episode, quick reminder, I am on tour, so we're bringing stand-up comedy to your city. I will be in El Paso, Texas, June 25th through the 27th, and then Atlanta, Georgia, July 16th, and then West Palm Beach, Florida, July 19th, then we swing it back home, Waco, Texas, July 31st, San Angelo, Texas, August 14th, and Denver, Colorado for my birthday, August 21st through the 23rd. You know where to get tickets. You already know where to find them. All right, so now let's check out the episode. And we are live. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the What Did He Said? Podcast. It's your boy Chingo Bling. Uh, Today's guest is one of my homeboys, one of my homies. He's also a staple in the rap game in Texas, representing the Slow Lane. What is it, records or entertainment? Slow Lane Records. Slow Lane Records. Get it on the Spotify. uh, Jam the playlist. All that shit. We got that boy T in the house. What yeah, up? Yeah, what's up, man? Appreciate you. Glad to be back, man. Chingo Podcast. We out here. Uh, as you can see, man, we got some new lights and shit. It's, yeah. it's slowly getting there. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, we still got Joe, but we're going to get a new Joe. I'm just playing, Joe. <laughs> I'm just playing. Uh, what's up, brother? We haven't seen you since the last time we did a video, and we did the uh, Craft Brew Tasting. Yeah, yeah. I remember that, man. It's good. It's good to be back. Like I said, that shit, that, uh, that was pretty dope. Uh, a lot of people hit me up, you know, and responding to that. Like they seen the video. It was all love. All like, the beer nerds. Yeah, man. Y'all Shout gotta, out to all the beer y'all nerds. I got to do more of that. So I was like, I bet for sure. And, and now we're here. We're back. Maybe we'll uh, be in Denver, Colorado at around the same time or something or in Cali. And, you know, we could do a different type of taste test. For sure. For sure. That actually is a good idea. Mm-hmm. That's actually a very good idea. I'm sp- I'm gonna be in Denver in August for my B day, um, but shit, man, how you been? How did how did you survive during the lockdown, bro? Man, I guess I like, just being able to to you know been doing this so long independently, like it really didn't affect me too much. You know what I mean? I just try to you know certain things were limited here and there, but I mean I was pretty good. Like got you know basically got a studio, so I mean. I just quarantined in the studio and just recorded. No recorded, shit. Recorded, recorded. Damn, yeah, man, so. bro. So you already had the studio set up by the time the lockdown happened? Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. So I just got in there. Um, I knocked out two EPs. I dropped those. I shot six videos. Dropped those. All that during the quarantine? All during the quarantine in one month. <sighs> bro. Ran it up. Man, if, if I tell you, bro, that that shit inspired the shit out of me because <laughs> I was back here trying to have a little studio set up but like i I did like actually my new single a mascara um i actually recorded it during like towards the end of first i made the beat like in the beginning of the quarantine so i did one song uh i did a freestyle too and that shit didn't come out right (laughs) because i recorded it here i recorded myself yeah it it didn't work out for me but uh man bro how, how have you always been that fucking like organized like how, how does your decision making process go man sometimes sometimes it's tough like it'll take me a long time to make a decision if it's a big decision but a lot of times like because i've just i've always just been mean like i've never really had a team i never really had like anybody to just kind of help so i've always been the one that got to handle everything all together i got to be the business i got to be the artist i got to be the manager i got to be the you know the good guy the bad guy the oh, nice man. guy the mean guy i got to do it all so um, I mean, that just kind of helped me just kind of progress a little bit further, taking care of everything, learning how to multitask a million things at Man, once. Man, you, you need a bad guy. <laughs> yeah, Everybody nah. needs a bad guy. <laughs> Marisol is my bad guy. Yeah, yeah, nah, for sure, for sure, because I can't always be the good guy, you yeah. know what I mean? Then they just try to take advantage of you yeah. all the time, so... Um, other than that, man, just, you know, just trying to be consistent with it and just try to keep it moving, you yeah. know what I mean? I, I've always noticed that... Um, the first time I like really, really, really worked with you, worked with you, we did a three city tour with Cap G. Yo. We called it the Three Amigos tour. Yo. It was uh, around the time Cap G was, you know, barely starting to try to hit Texas and get na- get known in Texas. And um, you know, me, shit, I was, you know, trying to figure out how to throw shows on my own. Right. And and we were all learning together because mm-hmm. I know I speak for both of us. Um, you know, we've dealt with promoters a lot. Um, but I noticed that you were like real good at uh, like attention to detail, like you know what I mean. You 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 would take your time and make sure that the fans got the proper presentation, yeah. and and like you said, you know sometimes it'd be a little bit more back and forth. But um, like I know I wanted to make sure everybody, like you and Cap, were happy with um, 
you know, the amount of value that we all got. The cross promotion, I know I benefited, man. Like, you know, some of your fans started following me and vice versa and Cap G and it, it all just fed itself. And um, for those of y'all that don't know the behind the scenes, uh, we jumped on that. Hey, Peso, Peso. all I yeah. know is Peso. Peso. Uh, Cap G came with the hook. Uh, we put our verses on it and we even shot a video. Cap G did his part in Atlanta. Yeah. And um, I mean, shit, it, it, we ran them views up. Uh, and I, we definitely need to collaborate. We got a couple songs in the, that's yeah. like almost complete. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, something might just need a hook or some shit. I got a gang of beats, so really, man, that's why I brought you here, bro. Yeah, you know, nah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> hey, man, come do my podcast and listen to these beats. Yeah, no, nah, we got, we got, we got, nah, but we got a lot more coming. We got a yeah, lot yeah, more coming yeah, for sure. Like, yeah, they, we, we, they don't even know what we got cooking up. So yeah, for sure, absolutely. So man, let them know the name of the titles that that you released. Um, well, of course, one of them was called Quarantine. It was it was the EP. It's called the Quarantine EP, and that was just basically like. First thing I did as soon as this, because I, I was in Vegas right before everything had um, happened. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I get back from Vegas, they shut down Vegas. And then we're like, oh, shit, we was just out there. This shit must be serious. So in Vegas, bro, how much money you think Vegas <laughs> lost? Bro, exactly. So, I mean, then everything kind of shut down out here. And I was like, yeah, now I need to get in the studio. So I end up I had one video that we had just we had shot it while we were in Vegas. So we dropped that as soon as we got back. And that kind of, you know, that for like a week, we let that ride. And then I dropped, I did the whole, I recorded that whole project, put that out. And then right away, shot all the videos. And then over the next like two weeks, I released like four more videos, five more videos. Who does all the editing for the videos? Um, those four videos were all shot by the same guy. So uh, my dude, he's my photographer slash videographer. Um, dope. His name's Daniel the Trillis. And uh, man, look him up. Check out his work. He's dope on the photos. I, I kind of, I think, you know, we kind of got more into video because he was kind of strictly photography. But now we, you know, he did a video and you know it came out live. And um, I think that quarantine video just hit like a hundred thousand or something uh, like yeah. that. So um, they're doing pretty good. So we're just gonna keep shooting, shooting some more off these new projects that we're about to drop. That's great, man. Yeah. If, you, if you need somebody with, with a little ankle monitor. In the video, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Holla at I me. Got you. I you know got what I'm saying? You. Cause uh, you know, f f sources say allegedly somebody walked by the TJ Maxx with some little pliers and then dropped the pliers and was like, fuck it, I'ma rock the motherfucking yeah. bitch. Give me the loot. Give yeah. me the loot. Yeah. And then I'm a bad bad. They're gonna run with it. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> but uh but yeah, man, what what's up on the show front? Like how how's everything happening with the way everything's kind of shut down. So as far as the show front, um, I mean, all the shows got canceled or postponed. Um, but what I've did like last week, uh, two weeks ago, and then last weekend is I'll just jump on the road and I'll hit like four or five states and I'll just knock out features and shoot videos, you know, along the route. And then I'll come back home. And then I did that again last weekend. I went to Dallas. I went to Wichita, Kansas. I went to Kansas City, Kansas. I went to Springfield, Missouri, uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Went back to Dallas and then came back to Houston. And that's over a course of two days. So it's just like constantly just being on the road, hop out, run in the studio, knock out a verse real quick, shoot a video real quick, whatever I got to do, jump back in there, hit the next city, and then, you know, just do it like that. But as far as shows and meeting Greeks, like everything's kind of still on hold right now. But Well, shit, bro, we should, we should look into doing... Um a drive-in concert where yeah. people just be in their cars and shit, beep, 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 yeah. flashing the headlights and shit. Yeah. Um, also, you gave me a good idea. You're like, man, you know, do a feature tour. A feature tour. I would love to do it from home if possible, <laughs> um, from, the, from, from the crib, like from Houston, because, well, I mean, let's just say, depend on the market. Right. Like, I'm sure if I went to Dallas and let's just say I told Word Life and Accomplice and like spread the word yeah. to all my people out there, uh, uh, Prince Rick and everybody like, hey man, if anybody needs verses, hit me up for the low, whatever, for whatever the amount is. And um, and it'll justify going way out there, uh, you know, expenses, yeah. hotels. Well, the, and thing is, the thing is, because I just talked, well, Accomplice had hit me like, yo, my boy wants a feature. I'm like, all right, bitch, well, shit, tell him, email it, I'll knock it out. He's like, they nah, they want to be in the studio with you while you're recording it. You know, they want the whole experience, experience they want, and they want to film it. And stuff if and they paying that m amount of money for the feature, I feel them. You know what I'm saying? They want to be there. They want to yeah. 
experience it and all that and you know at least get to meet you dab you up whatever it is yeah. so um i feel them so that's some people don't want don't like the whole email thing me i prefer it too send it over i knock it out right now and shoot it right back yeah. um but yeah that's just kind of the the only thing where as far as what was came you know on my way as far as that like nah bro we want you to pull up like even to kansas like i drove to kansas just to go do a feature because dude wanted me to be there you know yeah. he wanted to meet face to face and all that so i mean it's cool you know what they, I mean? they want to be able, they want to be able to, they want to be able to call girl i'm cracking a joke i'm not talking about <laughs> the people but, but i could just picture man somebody hiring me on some shit like that or, or you know with teeve and they're probably like yeah what's up what's up baby girl yeah <laughs> yeah we she over here in the stew we over here in the stew hold, hold, hold on let me my partner what, what'd you say uh that boy t what'd you say oh my bad i thought you was talking to me no nah, we over here with t you know we got the whole t hive up in here and um yeah. yeah what you doing after this yeah yeah no, 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 you ain't like my post i just we, you know we was up here smoking saying we tea smoking yeah <laughs> you know what i mean and that's like, exactly how it is bro you, you played it exactly how it be and i feel them you know what i'm saying like i ain't mad at them yeah i ain't mad at them shit uh well fuck man where can we get some verses man where they just hit you how do they hit you dm or yeah dm or you know email or you know whatever you know just comment drop a comment what's up on the verse or whatever so man i checked my uh how we doing on time we're good over there yeah, yeah. i checked my dms on instagram the other day and it was some people interested in verses i'm like shit man I, i'm gonna still have a little bit of stock in the game like yeah you know people still hitting me up so you know, we'll see. We'll see if it goes through. Man, but there's, there's, a, there's a few cats they just try to lowball. Like, bro, don't, yeah. like, why you even offer me that amount of money? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, this other cat slid in my DM the other day. He was like, bro, I got $100 right now. <sighs> right now. I'm like, bro, do you know I'm smoking $100 right now? <laughs> I just ashed $100. <laughs> yeah. It's $1,000 worth and, of and burnt it, up. And it was just, yeah, it's just cats like that. You know what I mean? Who just want, every, they want the most for the least. You know what I mean? It's just hard to please everybody. But you know what you know what it comes with, you know yeah. what I mean? You know what that Chingo Bling feature comes with. You know what that boy T feature comes with, you I'm know saying? what I mean? You Not only that, all the hard work we done put in since day one of our career, you, you know what that I mean? Audience. Man, you know what? I don't want to say it's a hustle, but sometimes, man, check this out. You got to watch out for this. Sometimes when people get a feature from you, they, they put your name under the uh, f primary artist. So, oh, yeah. so it'll be like such and such and chingo bling yeah, or whatever yeah and then so every time somebody's on let's say itunes and they search my name it's i need to drop more new shit because my shit cluttered up with yeah. uh or such and such All you know features. no offense to anybody i've ever done a song with yeah and no offense to the song nothing like that but i think priority is uh you know my shit nah, you know for sure, nothing for against sure. your shit but uh that's why I'm like, man, I got to clean this shit up. Even on TikTok, I went to search like my name and then the, the music songs or whatever. And it's it's just a whole bunch of just features and shit I did with other people. And people that paid yeah. you or yeah, whatever, yeah, which is cool. Yeah. But it's like, man, you know what? You got to look into all that. Yeah, nah, for sure. They're all that, you got to get all that organized. And plus, if you're the feature, then you're the feature. They can't they can be, you know, listing us as the primary artist if we're the feature. And that's how they try to slide it up in there. You know what yeah. I mean? So Let me ask you this, man. What advice have you heard given about the rap game or being an independent entertainer that you feel is just incorrect? Like, nah, man, all the upcoming artists, ignore, ignore this. Man, I don't know. It's so many things because so many people ask the same question like, oh, what can I do to do this or how can I do this? And and it's like what what works for one person might not necessarily work for that next person. You know what I mean? Like some people take the the clout route and just try to do shit for clout, you know, and try to, you know, get views and streams that way. And then some people really just try to be on some lyrical shit. And then some people just you know, be on some very, you know, the opposite of that, you know what I mean? So, and, and it just all depends. Like me, I can't say I got here because of one specific thing. Like it took me being in certain places at certain times, being on the road, you know, putting a lot of time and effort into myself, making sure my presentation was right, my whole brand was right. Like it's a lot of stuff that you got to do to advance in this, you know what I mean? To keep it moving and to really get your name out there. It ain't just oh, I could rap real good, or, hey, I could do this real good. Like, you got to do a whole bunch of stuff real good and manage your time and have a good team 
and be able to prioritize and know the business side of it rather than just, oh, I just got to go in the booth and rap. Like, nah, so much more than that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I got to do that too. But once I step out that booth, I got to do this, this, and this to make sure that record comes out. It looks the right way. The cover arcs right. It's out on the right platforms. The video's out, shot, edited. You know, it, it's a lot. You know what I'm saying? So that I would just say, like, try to just learn all those you know, uh, being independent, don't just try to depend on everybody because that will hold it up too. Like if mm -hmm. I waited on my, on this cameraman to edit this video for three months, like I'd be waiting for that three months. But if I got this dude who can knock it out in a week or two, you know, the same quality of work, like, man, I got to go with him because time is short. People's attention uh, is shorter and shorter these days with the internet and social media and all that. So, I mean, you just got to be more consistent with it because if not, they're going to be on to the next new artist or yeah. the next, you know, up and coming. So y'all be on the lookout for our new song. It's going to be called Clout Route. That ain't what we about. Nope. <laughs> that boy T, you got to jam to this. Certain yeah. shit you got to do to advance in this. It's the Clout Route. That ain't what we about. No, I'm just bullshitting. All right, y'all. Uh, my freestyle fell off. We're going to take a quick break. All my cafecito time people that are watching live, you st hang in there because we still about to go live with y'all. But we'll be right back. That boy T. Sass. Back. What did he say? Podcast with that boy T. Sass. All right. Check it out, man. Shout out to everybody tuning in right now via my Facebook Live. Uh, shout out to San Antonio, Corpus Christi, Oak Cliff, Texas. El Paso, Molina, Texas, Amarillo, Grapeland, Texas. Grapeland. Where's Grapeland? Grapeland. I think that's about Dallas. It sounds like, yeah. <clears throat> I thought that was Grapevine. San Angelo, San Angelo, Texas, Compton, and then Iowa. Not Compton, Iowa. Compton, and then Iowa. Happy birthday to Layla Marie. Um, happy birthday to Manny Salgado. His birthday is this Friday. Thank you guys for tuning in all across the web. Uh, and somebody had a question from the web. From the Facebook. I sound old as shit calling it the web. On the internets. Is that knocking? It sound like, I don't know if they shooting here in uh, Midtown slash Third Ward. All right, here goes one of the questions right here, brother. Uh, what do you like about working together? Say something nice about me, T. Um, <laughs> man, where do I begin? Where do I begin? Tell me more, sir. <laughs> Tell me more. Nah, man. I mean, shit. I think I think me and you both got dope minds. We both creative. We both, you know, out here trying to just do some dope, do some out the norm, some different. And you know, I know you got a lot of dope skills. I got a lo lot of dope skills. When we put our skills together, we got like super Mexican skills, and and you know what I'm saying. You know, we just it's just it just becomes it just becomes a bro fest, man. Already. The way these questions were set up. Um, <laughs> But nah, man, we already kind of talked about. You don't touch my drum set. I don't touch your drum yeah, set. Yeah, like, you know, we like you know, stepbrothers. We got a good bro. understanding. You, you know, know your saying? favorite dinosaur is my favorite yeah, dinosaur. Really? Yep. Uh, but yeah, man, shit. Uh, I, I, I am super inspired by the grind you put in during Corona, bro. Like you came out of there with what? Two EPs. Two EPs. Six and music videos. Six music videos. Yeah. My bitch ass was scared. I was just taking <laughs> three walks a day. <laughs> uh man it makes i feel like no you know what i'm gonna take that back i was kind of working on myself i'll put it to you like that i was definitely like looking like you know not to sound all spiritual but i was like looking inside myself type shit i got a lot of maturing to do even though i'm 40 y'all uh, i still you know we still we never stop growing um but but you know shit i i consider you a homie uh even though we you know we collaborate on some artist shit um, one of the favorite tracks we ever did was that freestyle on that, uh, girls in the club mm -hmm. showing up, oh, taking man, their hands in the club, getting up. Yeah. you can't say all of the words. Mm -hmm. Y'all know what song I'm talking about. Uh, <laughs> that eight ball MJG. Uh, man, uh, you went in on that track, brother. Um, uh, when we're on tour, Hitting these comedy clubs, we always have a playlist, and um, usually that one plays several times. Uh, man, I think you did like twenty four bars. Or <laughs> yeah, I might have. I might have. <laughs> Went in. Yeah. So, uh, so your your signature ad lib, like like the the laugh. How did that come about? Man, honestly, what 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 really inspires that a lot of people don't know. This this goes back to like 
growing up, I watched The Simpsons a lot. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you remember Nelson used to always come through. He would punk somebody and then just laugh at him. <laughs> so it's kind of like a, a, a Nelson Muntz type of laugh, but I just kind of gave my my little twist on it. And it's just on some like just on some fly shit, you know what Almost I mean? Almost like, like I just wrecked it and I'm clowning y'all. Yeah, pretty much. You know that's what I mean? At the end that's of the verse up. or whatever, say say something fly. But Hell I mean that's that's yeah, that's pretty much where it came from. Hell yeah, man. Uh we really we really gotta look into that drive in shit. Uh I don't know if comedy shows work well in drive ins. Um but I, I I would imagine that music works well in drive-ins yeah. because everybody can have their fucking speakers. Um, I'm brainstorming right now. I hope nobody steals my idea. But like, almost like, can you imagine? Obviously, you got to be social distance and people can't just be all hanging out. But can you imagine like a truck show slash, almost like a car show slash, as long as, you know, I mean, with a music show, every you know, you want people to be crunk. In, in comedy, is is different. You don't want people to be too disrupted. You know what I mean? Like, um, they doing construction or something, man. It's not like fucking Bob the Builder is beating down the wall. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I think that's like a gangster idea. Did you see like MC Magic and Bash and and some cats had done some drive-in shows? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard it, it went pretty good too. It, it was probably the first time I had heard of something like that. But I think it's a dope idea, and I think we probably should do some more stuff like that. Yeah, it, it sounds yeah. innovative, man. Creative yeah. to work like like MC Magic, man. Props to him, bro. Like he's killing it with his. Uh, I need to call him up, pick his brain. Um, like the way he be like putting his shows together and promoting them and packing the house and and spreading the word and getting people involved and um you know that that's you know that's what we all trying to do um currently I'm on this comedy tour but some of these clubs you know they're not at full capacity y'all yeah yeah cuz the rona and now they're talking <laughs> about second wave and scaring the shit out of people which yeah. I mean I know is real and I, and it is scary yeah um it just sucks when you come in from out of town. We don't, the, I don't think the comedy clubs be doing refunds. Like if you just heard something on the news, now you're paranoid and now you want to cancel. Nah, I, I, I don't think, think so. I don't think they do refunds. They, they give you store credit. <laughs> something. <laughs> yeah, because like when we just did Corpus Christi, we did some comedy shows down there. And right when we got there, the news ran a thing talking about, man, it's a spike and, you know, y'all get ready. And man, the, the club was getting calls. A couple people like canceled, like didn't show up. But uh, that would have sucked yeah. if everybody would have just demanded their money back the day of after you went in thinking it was sold out. And now can you imagine if all those people had got a refund and now you don't have time to promote to, to let people know that it's really not sold out anymore and you need them to be hurry and be here in 20 minutes? <laughs> nah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. man, bro, like. <laughs> Uh, thankfully, I, I mean, I know you said that um, it didn't really affect you much because you were already used to just, you know, doing your own thing and and uh, operating. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, that's a blessing, bro. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, man, it's just but it sucks because not everybody is like that. There's people that depend on that nine to five or, you know, whatever. And and, and if that shut down then you know, they like, oh, damn, they just kind of stuck. So make oh, sure. Oh. I mean, I would make sure you always have some type of backup hustle side man, hustle, e- easier said than done because you know the tour was lit you know yeah. I, i'm over here doing 35 cities and shit yeah and uh and next thing you know it's like oh hey um you know how you were supposed to be in california for 10 weeks and <laughs> y'all was supposed to y'all was gonna be summering in la and you taking the nanny with you yeah, and, no. and the girls and, <laughs> and, and you you're gonna be like all right babe it's thursday night i gotta go do ontario improv or then you know, I'll be back. I'm going to go do Be Real's thing and chief up with Be yeah. Real. Or, I'll yeah. be back. I'm going to the dispensary. You know, none of that yeah. is gone. Um, so I, I will admit, I definitely just, you know, not not like, oh, fuck. I need to fucking, you know, get in the, in the bread line. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. just adios. But, uh, but definitely caught off guard in terms of, oh, shit. You know, I didn't really factor in or predict. Like, because in my mind. Yeah. In order, like, if some shit went down and shows got canceled, it would mainly be like, oh, well, there was a hurricane in uh, Florida and, you know, everything had to shut down, so you got to reschedule. Okay, I get that, but I'm, I'm going to still have North Carolina, New yeah, York, uh, Minnesota up. or something. 
It's like, nah, all of it. Yeah, and now Which, they're like, oh, it might be a whole nother year or I don't know. They, yeah, so we're going to have to figure out some virtual hologram uh, <laughs> something, you know what I'm hey, saying? Hey, man, look here. Um, you know, you know. Uh, you know, I, I'm gonna I'm, I'm have to be like, man, my girl got a foot page. I don't know what's gonna happen. <laughs> I don't, I don't know if you're gonna see a little OnlyFans link or something. You might see my feet. I might have a foot page. Uh, nah, I'm fucking with y'all. Uh, that's some crazy shit, man. I've been hearing, man. Like, a uh, matter of fact, shit, Joe, the millennial, he was like, man, a lot of people got, uh, a lot of people got foot pages, and I'm like, boy, you know. <laughs> He's like, man, you know what this boy told me, bro. Man, this boy, man, these millennials, dog. <laughs> I think the drops are kicking in. Yeah. It's going to be a lit podcast. Yeah. Uh, this middle segment is real lit. This boy told me, he's like, hey, man, uh, you know on them apps. I'm like, what apps, man? You know the, you know, the dating apps. You know, because Joe's single at the moment, yeah. ladies. Uh, young Joe's single at the moment. He's like, man, you know, everybody just on there really trying to hook up. They're not really, like, really, you know, trying to have a meaningful, you know, not looking for a mate on there. Everybody's yeah. just on there to hook up. And he says, and they even put a OnlyFans. They promote their OnlyFans on the Tinder. Yeah. And it's like, it took me a while, right? Because I'm old. I'm 40. And I'm just like, okay. And then I was like, wait a minute. So they'd be like, oh, hey, I'm here for a date. By the way, I, you know, I, I show my stuff on the web. This is what I can do. And by the way, I'm available for dates. And it's like, hold on. It sounds like it's some cash app happening. Mm -hmm. Man, my mind was blown. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. In the words of Pimp C, <laughs> pimping ain't dead. <laughs> what the fuck? Moved it just to moved to the web. <laughs> wow, son. It's the year. 2020, yeah. bro. Like. They talking about I don't want to get political, but they talking they, about they buying they buying houses off feet pages. Off a of foot, <laughs> off of, man. Let me get off, my toenail fixed. I got this one fucked up toenail, <laughs> and I think it's time. <laughs> uh, I think it's yeah. time. I think I could bring in an extra little hundred dollars yeah, or something that's, from that's, the toe that's page. Rare. That's rare. Oh my goodness gracious, man. Um, they saying that this year, the elections, they might have people do mail in ballots. Yeah, I heard about that. You think they're going to be cheating? Somebody? Everybody? Cheating? Man, I just, I, I know they, they know Mexicans don't know how to use the mail. So Man, they, that's you know, how they got us. Yeah, bro. they got us. <laughs> you feel me? That's how they yeah. got us. Yeah. We're trying to learn email. I'm offended, you know T. You have triggered me. Uh, this These stereotypes are hurtful for the Latinx community. Um, did, did, fuck it. We're going to talk current events and shit. Man, you heard about that... Um, that uh that that area in Seattle they're calling Chaz yeah chop or chop now they changed it to chop I think it was chop yeah first it was Chaz and it's chop yeah man what you think about that shit man I don't know that's crazy I heard I heard somebody just died over there too yeah, make sure you held it close yeah yeah because the uh, EMS couldn't get to them like yeah. they they wouldn't let them in they were like we don't want y'all here and they're like your boy's bleeding yeah stay away. Man, I don't know. I, I understand what what the what the meaning is behind it and all that, and that's supposed to be like a designated zone or some something like that for people to do that. So I mean, they they should have had some better security, you know what I mean, or some type of better, you know, route in and out of there for that type of situation or something like that. But I mean, it just that shit sucks all around when you know they're that close, but you know can't get to the person to you know do what they got to do. Yeah, it's unfortunate, man. Yeah. That anybody got I, I don't know what the details were, but uh the first thing they did, man, the first thing they did when they got their areas, they built a wall and then they were like, Man, it's a no cop zone. Yeah. And they were like, But but these homies right here with guns, they're gonna be stopping y'all and frisking y'all and that's all like our security and it's like and then the the, the mayor is bringing in porta potties and cleaning their porta potties out for them. It's like, damn son, like y'all being real nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like just accommodating the whole, yeah, situation. lawlessness. But you yeah. know, you know, uh, man. You know, this is probably the last time I'm gonna take these drops before a podcast because <laughs> T's probably like, man, how you gonna bring me on here and ask me all these curveball ass <laughs> questions? <laughs> <laughs> but shit, man. Well, fuck, man. I, maybe my mind's just been on this, just like, uh, like the world we live in. And maybe it's because I'm 40 and I just trip out. Like my wife called me. I don't know if Premium Goods, uh, the sneaker store, mm -hmm. is sh permanently shut down. I don't know if they're renegotiating with the landlord, but that whole uh, university shopping area, yeah. like 
uh, just she my wife said only torchies is open yeah and like premium goods sneaker store is gone or is closed yeah there's this the kids store premium kids is closed um I, I think she said urban outfitters might have been open but like just a whole bunch of economic devastation man and um, yeah today i called just to just get a set of tires for some wheels i would got and the guy's like oh we're shut down for the next two weeks because the customer came in with covid and then who who makes you shut down how does that work so i don't know well On i guess own? the 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 main employer shut them down because he said that they had to test all the employees now to make sure they were all good so he said until they get the results back that then they, they can't open back up so and i was like so i can't just like He's like, nah, we can't sell any tires, any nothing until this is clear. So he's like, just call back in a couple of weeks and we'll let you know if we're back open. And this is the only place in town that has these specific set of tires that I'm looking for. What kind of car was it you, you picked up? In no, Missouri? I picked up some wheels, just oh, a set okay. of wheels. But I need these, like, they're like racing tires. So um, this is the only place in town that stocks them. And, I mean, I can't get them. You know what I mean? So uh that just i mean it, it it ain't just like grocery stores and all that like and it's everything you know what i mean like every it, it slowed up everything comedians you know i on my podcast were zooms for a minute and uh you know how that audio be if you thought that audio was bad earlier oh yeah no. <laughs> you don't know who's talking you <laughs> i bet all right we're gonna take a quick ac break because i know y'all like good sound and uh, we'll be back in a minute with that boy t keep it locked Sauce. Yep. Back to what did he say? Podcast special guest in the house, that boy T. All right, let's do some rapid fire questions. You ready, bro? Let's go. All right, here we go. Uh, Ariel or Jasmine? Man, I'd have to go with um, Jasmine. Know what I'm saying? Cause she thick. Mm. Uh, just kidding. Dawn <laughs> or dusk? Um, dawn. Interesting. Do you snore? Nah, I just laugh in my sleep. <laughs> Favorite junk food? Um, pizza. Already. Um, favorite childhood TV show? The Simpsons. We talked about it. Already. <laughs> Last Halloween costume? Oh, man. I don't, I don't even... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Man, I don't know. I don't know. Halloween Halloween was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the way we smoke. Uh, favorite holiday? Um shit, my B day. Oh shit, that's a holiday. Your birthday? Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's, it's a uh, national holiday. Cake or pie? Cake or pie? Um, cake. All right. Wedding shit. cake. No shit. That see, that's where we differ, man. I, I'm pie over cake any day. Yeah, but wedding cake. It's okay. A different type of cake. What? <laughs> wedding cake taste? High wedding cake taste. Nice. Tastes good. No shit. Yeah. Wedding cake. I'm familiar with like birthday cake. How was your father's day, man? Oh man, it was amazing. It was amazing. I had a good time. I had made it just back in town in time for Father's Day, or I probably would have got disowned. But uh, <sighs> man, it was good. It was good. It was good to be there, spend time with my kids, and just be back in town. And, you know, relax, get my mind right. Yeah, cause man, you you that you did like how many cities you went? <sighs> yeah. Yeah, it was like six cities in two days. <laughs> I left Thursday afternoon and got back Saturday like night. So, man, um, we were talking off air about uh, this potential shutdown that they might be doing. Um, that that's a tricky one, man, because obviously on one side it's like, well, hey, man, it's real. People really got it. A lot of people, a lot of people's immune system is having a hard time with it. Um, hospitals are getting full. Uh, I heard they took they turned uh, Texas Children's into like a backup hospital that they're going to start admitting adults and stuff like that. And then at the same time, you know, it's horrible to see like the economic devastation. It's su- it's such a crazy time that we're living in. Man, for sure. Like yeah. I, I, I wouldn't have imagined this like six months ago or three months ago. You know what I mean? Like um, and, it, and it's not just affecting it's affecting everybody in the whole world and the different people are taking it different ways it's stressing people out a lot of people are angry mad like you know then other stuff going on is mm-hmm. upsetting people and it's just all mm-hmm. piling on top of each other yep. people are just you know they don't know what to think people don't know how to feel you're watching this stuff on tv all day going into your brain you're yep. on social media looking at everything so i mean you just got to be able to just remain 
um, sane, you know, and just not try to, you know, do nothing crazy. Think twice before you react to certain stuff. You know what I mean? Like, don't let little stuff bother you. You know what I mean? Like, just try to keep it moving, go about your day and just, you know, do you whatever. You know what I mean? It's just, it's enough crazy shit going on. You know what I mean? Just instead of adding to it, just try to take away from it or just, you know, stay doing you or whatever. That's yeah. why everything we do, all these shows we do every time I go out of town, you know, I just try to keep it positive, let everybody know, like, you know, it's a lot of fucked up shit going on in this world. You know what I'm saying? We got we got to make it better. You know what yeah. I mean? So it starts with us and we influencers. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? We do music. People listen to our music every day. So it means our, our opinions matter to, mm -hmm. you know, to these people. So. As long as we ain't just in there telling them to do nothing crazy, you know what I mean? Like, I think we'll be good, you know what I mean? Which we don't, but, you know, there, there's a lot of people in this world that, you know, do stuff like that. So. Man, you, you need to do a video for YouTube where it's like that boy T, like meditation, like guided meditation. Yeah. It'll just, yeah. It's almost like ASMR. And like, I'm not and I'm not the most calm person, you know what I mean? Like, I do, I do take my, my, my medicinal therapy to calm my nerves sometimes, but, I mean, it just... It's just seeing everything going on, like it's just crazy. You know what I mean? Like I wouldn't want that. I wouldn't wish that on nobody or none of my family or kids mm -hmm. or anything. Or grand, you know, grandparents or relatives, none of that. So yeah, uh, uh, but you should call it like slow lane meditation series. Yeah. I can Sometimes do that. in life, you just gotta slow down. Yeah. I know social media is addicting. I know you've been seeing these negative images all day, but right now we're just gonna let go. Put it all behind us. That's what. Hey, that's slow what, that's down what the whole with the screwed about, up being in the slow lane for real. Just slow just, down well, with the everybody else up. is going fast. We in the slow lane, just keeping it moving. The what? The T isms. Mm. T isms. Yeah, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another slow lane meditation yeah. session with that boy T. Give you some encouragement, some positivity. So, what is your what is your like morning routine? Like when you get up, um, like what? Bam! What does T do? Um, I mean, the first thing I do is wake and bake. Um, I get my mind right. I figure out what my schedule is. On an empty stomach, you just yeah. I mean, I I I I, I got to eat. I mean, I got to smoke to be able to eat good. You know what I mean? So uh, you know, first thing I do, I smoke. Then I get me a nice little breakfast together. And as I'm doing that, I'm checking emails, checking uh, social media, stuff like that, and then just make sure my kids trade all that, and then boom, hit the road, go to the studio start knocking out, you know, whatever I got to do throughout the day. And man, it's just, it's not enough hours in the day to do it all. You know what I mean? I try to do it all. I'm all over the city. I got to be at different places and, you know, doing so much at once. And, um, I mean, every day is different. So it's not just like a, you know, daily yeah. routine or nothing like that. Like every morning is different and, uh, man, just trying to just keep it moving. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah, just try to balance everything on the plate. Yeah. That's what's up, man. Tell them uh, where they could find you online, social media, and, and so on. Man, go to thatboyt.com, screwtopessay.com. Check me out on YouTube, um, Spotify, Pandora. Subscribe to those. Check out my Twitch, slash screwed up essay. Um, you know, every everything on social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok. I got all that, SoundCloud. Um, and just stay tuned. I got more on the way. And if the shutdown's coming, then I got way more on the way. You'll so. be ready. And yeah. what's what's the music project you want them to go check out? Uh, man, check out the Quarantine EP. I think I think that was pretty cool. You know what I mean? It was some real smooth, some you know real cool that people could jam to during this time. Um, I dropped a 420 project called Green Acres. I got another album that's getting wrapped up that's about to drop. Um, maybe July 13th. I'm thinking that'll probably be the date on that one. Um, and then just check out everything I got already out. Hometown Boy, Slow Lane, um, you know, Works Really Good series, all that, man. It's, it's out there. We're we working. Awesome. That's what's up, man. Thank you for stopping man, by. thank you. Thank you guys for listening, tuning in, and uh, we'll catch you next time. I'll see you in El Paso this weekend. And for all tour dates, chingobling.com. Sass. Yeah.